In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a variation swatches for WooCommerce step by step. Here's a few example swatches of what you can create using this plugin. If you want to create image swatches, you can do so. You can create color swatches, button slash label. You can also create um, pattern swatches. So if you sell a product that comes in various patterns or shape, for example, you might sell photography and might want to sell the frames and you might have different frames. So the pattern swatches will be perfect for that use case. With the pro version, you can create a dual color variation. You can also change the shape of the swatches and there's more advanced customization to edit the color, the hover color, the active color, the padding margin, and so on. You also have the option as well to control the display of how the out of stock um, variations are handled. For example, here you can see this one's clearly crossed out and grayed out. You've got various options to choose from. You can also enable your swatches to show on your shop archive page to streamline the experience for your users. So that's just a quick overview of what you can achieve using this plugin. Without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is install the variation swatches for WooCommerce by WooSuite. It's free to download. The link will be in the description of this video. Assuming you've downloaded and activated this plugin, you will now see this variation swatches menu where we can customize the look and feel of our variation swatches. But for now, I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to replicate this product in WooCommerce in a more user friendly way. So here you can see we've got various frame style and also different frame color as well. And we've got the size as well. So we're going to replicate this product within WooCommerce. If you've already added your products and products attributes, then you can go ahead and skip this step and I'll show you how to set up the variation swatches later on. But I'm going to walk through it step by step from start to finish, adding our very variable product and adding the attributes as well and showing you how to set it up. So let's go ahead and copy over this product name and let's click add new product and then let's copy over some of the description. And then here we're going to change the product data from simple product to variable product. Okay, next we would actually go ahead and select our attributes here, but we haven't we haven't created any product attributes. So for now, I'm just going to save this to draft and then I'm going to head over to attributes or so product and then attributes, just opened it in a new tab. And then here we'll create the color attribute. And for the color attribute, I'm going to set the type to color and then just click add attribute. And then we're going to create a size attribute. I'm going to set the type to um, label and just add attribute. And then I'm going to create a frame attribute and set the type to image. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the attribute. So for the color, I'm going to configure the term of this attribute. I'm going to create three different colors. And in here as well, we can set the color for it. We can set it to white. And then I'm going to create um, black. And then we can go ahead and set the color for it as well. Add. And then I'm going to select red. Or create red. And then we'll set the color to red. And then just add color. Okay, now that's done, we can head back over to our main attributes page. And now I'm going to configure the frame on this product here. They've got three different frames. So they've got the scoop, the vector, and also conservation. So for this example, I'm just going to select two different frames. So I'm going to create the scoop and the vector frame. Let's go back to attribute. And then where's where we've got frame here, I'm going to click configure item. So we're using this frame attribute as like a pattern. So for example, if you sold wallets, you might have a leather version and a cotton version and so on. So in that case, you would create, um, you'd create like a type attribute. And then for the type, you could create a attribute term like leather, cotton, and all the different um, pattern variation of that leather wallet. So just for our 
image example. As we said, we're going to create scoop and we're going to upload the image of this particular attribute term. Okay, so here we've got the scoop frame. So we'll just add this one and then just use this image and then we just click add new frame and then we're going to create the vector frame. Again, we'll just upload the image and here we've got the vector frame and then let's click add new frame. Okay, perfect. Now let's head back over to our attributes page. Now we're going to configure the size. So let's click configure term and we're just going to create um, three different sizes. So let's have a look at our product here and see what sizes they offer. 10 by 12, 12 by 12, 15 by 21. Let's see if I remember all these. Okay, so there's 10, 10 I believe, 15 by 21. Okay, perfect. Now that we've got our attributes set up, we can head back over to our product page. I'm just going to refresh this page to ensure it's got all the new attributes that we've created. Now we head back over to attributes here and then we can go ahead and select our co color attribute and we can add this one. Let's select all the colors that we created and then let's select as well use for variation. Save this and then we're also going to add our frame attribute select all and let's select to use for variation. Again, let's select our size attribute, then select all and then use for variations. Okay, perfect. Now that we've added our attributes, we can go to variation and then from here we can create our variation. So let's just click add and then we've got for the color, we've got um, black and then for the frame, we've got the scoop and then for the size, and then let's just repeat this step. So we've got that two sides. Okay, perfect. So we've added all our product attributes here. Okay, and now we need to set the variation price, otherwise it won't display on the front end. So for the price, I'm just gonna set this to 49. Now let's save changes. And let's also add our featured product image. Okay, and now let's publish and see how it looks on the front end. Okay, it's looking really good so far. But the next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually set um, the featured image for the different product variation. So for example, when we select black, it's probably, a, it's not a good example. Let's reset this selection and let's select red. And as you can see, it's still showing the black image. So we wanna go ahead and customize this. So it will actually show the image of the red variation of this product. So again, let's head back to variation. And for the red, let's add a featured image. Okay, so this product, this variation is red and the frame type is vector and then obviously you've got the size here. So this one is the scoop um, variation. So obviously you display the appropriate image for the vector frame. But for this example, I'm just gonna use all the same red images. Okay, let's save, changes, and then let's go ahead and update our product. Now let's 
refresh this page and now when we select our red frame and the size there we can see the appropriate product variation so as you can see this experience is a lot more user friendly than on this side so for example here we have to select everything via the drop down whereas on our version the customer can easily visualize what it is they're purchasing so so for example if they just want the white frame then here they can select the frame type and then they can select the appropriate size and then add to cart so our experience is a lot more streamlined so now that we've created our product and our product attributes let me show you how you can go ahead and actually configure the variation swatches settings so by default i think it looks quite good already but let's go ahead and do a further customization to it so let's head back to our dashboard and now let's open up the variation settings as well by default WooCommerce would show um, all these different product attributes as drop downs. So if I, if I quickly deactivate our plugin, so let's deactivate this and then let's head back to this page. Now we'll see the default display of the WooCommerce system. So this is how it looks currently. But then when we activate our variation swatches for WooCommerce plugin, will have that beautiful display in which we've created. So now let's reactivate this plugin and let's head over to our variation settings. Okay, so here, so the first option we've got is auto convert your drop down to labels. So had we not went through and customize all those attributes, then all these will be dropped down like this. So for example, if we wanted to change all these into a label slash button, we would enable this option and then we can actually go ahead and select the attributes in which we want to auto convert into this label then we hit save changes and refresh and there you can see all our attributes are converted into this label slash button display okay so as well we've got we have the option to choose various attribute shapes Currently it's square, we can make it rounded or we can just select this circle variation. So let's hit save and let's see how it looks. You can see we've got this rounded display. Um, the auto convert drop down to image, this is a super powerful feature. If you created a featured image for each variation like what we did, if you can remember we went back and added a featured image. Yeah, so we added a featured image for our variation. If we were to activate this option, um, in say for example for the color section here, instead of showing this as a label or the actual color, we could show the variation image here. So for the red one, you'd see basically a small red image swatch just like this one. So the disable default plugin style sheet is useful if you're using a particular theme that relies on our plugin to provide the variation swatches. We can enable or disable the tooltip. If you've got a particular product which isn't best described using one color, you can go ahead and enable the dual color selection on our pro version. You also have the option to control the out of stock behavior. So say for example, if we head back to one of our products here and let's set, let's set um, the red scoop um, 10 by 10 to outer stock and let's update and now let's refresh this page and let's select red scoop 10. So when, when the user selects it, now it's saying that it's out of stock, but if you wanted, you could control how this is displayed so before the user actually selects the size in here you could up to put an x through it or gray out or hide this selection automatically as well so that's using this outer stock behavior here in our design section 
We've got various styling option. You can customize how the swatches behave when a user's hovering over it. And also when it's selected, you can customize the font size, the, the padding, the margin, and the swatches wrapper margin, and so much more. You can also set the swatch width and height as well. And our shop archive tab here, you can go ahead and enable your swatches on the shop archive page. You can also show the clear link as well, so a user can clear the current selection in which they've selected. You have the option to control the swatch alignment, and if we just go ahead and save this. Now let's head over to this category here, and here you can see our variation swatches on the shop archive page. So from here, a user can quickly select what it is they want, and then just add it to cart straight from the shop archive page. As well, you can customize the design of the shop archive page. Let's quickly customize the design to how we created it in the first place. If we wanna change this color attribute here to actual colors, then let's head back over to our dashboard and then let's go product attributes. And then here we just click edit and then the type we'll set it to color and then let's head back to attributes and we'll also change the frame as well we'll change the frame type currently as you can see type here it says select meaning it's empty so we'll select change the type to image and then update and if you can remember we already created the different color and the different um, image for the type so now when we refresh this page we can see our color attributes here and our frame type as well. And then if we check on a shop archive page, so instead of it looking like this, let's refresh this page now. And there you can see it looks a lot better. We've got the color selection, the frame type, and also the size as well. And we can add to cart. And that just about brings us to the end of this video. If you've got any questions, any feature requests, leave a comment in the description below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.